Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome into another edition of Solo Your Roll. I am Dominic Lorenzano, alongside writer for the Yaki Way Report, Jesse Caulfield, as always. And uh, listen, we got some guys getting scapegoated today. Kind of feels like, what do they call that day when they fire people in the NFL? Black Monday. Black Monday. Black Monday is coming early. Sca- I call it scapegoat week, but yeah. It's only one team. No, I know. There's just, you know, they fired two of them already. They got some time apart, but so anyway, we'll talk of that. Um, the Niners, I'll tell you why the why the window has closed. I think most of us agree that maybe the window is closed, but you know, some people don't remember some of the things that went down to get us here. So well, I'll remind people just what went wrong. Um, and yeah, Bruins fire in Monty and a bunch of other NFL talk. Uh, Lamar again, I believe we'll go over the record, but uh, an interesting record. Lamar has now when he faces either the Chiefs or the Steelers, maybe the two biggest opponents he faces. So a problem there for the Ravens. Um, but with that, you know, actually you were supposed to introduce and get it started. I just yeah, you realized. Just, you just took it from me. I'm I know. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Listen, all right. it's a new studio. It's new setup. Thinking about this. I'm thinking about that. You know, it's only the second week. You stole my iPad from me and then you stole the opening. I, I, I'm stealing everything. Anyway, I don't have my notes in front of me. Well, that's okay because I start the talking on this point anyway. And this minute I'm done with, with the uh, with do. the with the clip recording, then you can have your thing back and you can counter. But anyway, so the Jets have fired Joe Douglas, um, completing the firing of everyone except for Aaron Rodgers because they can't do that. Um, but the head coach goes first; they get worse after that, and then they fire Joe Douglas. Um, and you know. He's done a very good job with everything but the quarterback. I do kind of understand why you fired Joe Douglas simply from the standpoint of, like, this was the Hail Mary. Aaron Rodgers is what it was going to take to save his job because he whiffed on the quarterback. But my problem is this, right? So with Joe Douglas, other than drafting Zach Wilson, which we all know is a whiff, he's hit on almost everything else. Garrett Wilson, Sauce Gardner, DJ Reed, gave Quinn and Williams the extension that was smart. Um, so he's built a very nice roster, and he has shown the ability to hit on these picks. And, you know, the old saying is you can hit on everybody else, but if you get the quarterback wrong, you're screwed. But, like, if you have shown the ability to hit on everything else, it seems logical to think that eventually, if I just give him a second chance, he'll be able to get the quarterback right. And, by the way, he took a quarterback that failed, but you look back at that draft class, everybody failed. So, you know, people in the NFL, they're always getting fired. There's the joke, you get hired to get fired. But, yeah, that's my problem. If the guy has shown the ability to hit on everything else, just give him a second chance at the quarterback. But he had to throw a desperate Hail Mary because of what that owner historically does and fires people and, you know, sell his soul for Aaron Rodgers, who was 40 years old, and that didn't work. And the other thing, too, is originally when Joe took the job and hired Sala, The thinking was that Matt LaFleur was going to come with Robert, at least for that first year, and they were going to give Sam Darnold another year because particular people, a lot of people in the Shanahan offense, liked Sam Darnold. But for whatever reason, that plan went out the window and they drafted Zach Wilson. Now, there is nothing that's been reported why that plan went out the window, but given the history of this franchise, I feel like it's safe to assume that probably the owner had something to do with why that plan went out the window because he didn't want Sam Darnold anymore and he wanted him to draft another one. I, you know, we don't know. Maybe it was Joe's decision. Um, certainly wasn't Matt LaFleur's. Probably, like, f- from everything we've heard, it's not Matt LaFleur's. But I have a feeling to think that it was probably the owner. And this is not to absolve Joe Douglas of everything. Zach was a whiff. Um, we can debate if the head coach was a whiff. Probably wasn't the greatest hire in the world. Um, but you can always go back and do that again. It's not a player where you know you've given up a draft capital or impacts your salary cap, so it's a little less punitive. And Solo wasn't a disaster. I mean, clearly the team's gotten worse since he left, so he wasn't the worst head coaching hire in the world. And it was hard to win with Zach Wilson playing quarterback. But yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you know, I feel like some people are saying Joe Douglas wasn't the problem. I feel like a lot of media people aren't really defending Joe. But my opinion is this. He whiffed in a quarterback. He whiffed on a quarterback in a draft class that none of them have hit. Now Trevor's been decent, but I feel like we all think he's overpaid and a bit overrated. The rest of them have all been massive busts. 
So it was like, what did you want Joe to do? And again, if you're gonna get everything else right, it seems logical to me that just give him another chance and he'll get the quarterback right, instead of hiring somebody who you have no idea if they can get any of it right, including the quarterback. So Joe is out, this is what this franchise does. What did Bill say? Ready, shoot, aim yeah. about Woody Johnson. So I guess that's just on par for the Jets. But uh, yeah, I mean, he whiffed on the QB, but I think you should give the guy a second chance, but what do I know? I'm kind of in the middle with all this. I mean, I'm not stridently, because I, I, I understand the things that he missed on. And when Aaron flopped, you kind of knew it was over. But Yeah, I mean, he is the guy that traded for Aaron Rodgers. That's, that's a big demerit. Yeah. Even if I'm sure it was not necessarily his idea. Yeah, I was about I to bet. say. I was about to say, but but was it totally Joe's idea? You think? I mean, it wasn't. I assume it wasn't his idea. I do feel like everyone in the building was on board. Probably. Before it happened. Yes. You know, I'm, I bet there's a lot of regret throughout yeah. the building now. I'm also a little hesitant to say he's hit on all of his picks. I didn't say all of them, but he's hit okay. on most. No, you're never gonna he, hit on all of them. Sure. But he's, you know, the line never got fixed. I understand some of that was Bill Belichick, being Bill Belichick, screwing him over in a draft. Okay, but the Penn State kid that they drafted in this last draft has been good. One man. Okay. It's still. I know, but. <clears throat> it's also, when they have guys, like, all right, they hit with the Brees Hall pick, Sauce Gardner, Garrett Wilson. My problem with these. DJ Reed. My problem with these guys is they are a lot of them prima donnas, and mm -hmm. if you're going to be a team in New York, particularly the New York Jets in New York, you got to be very particular about who you're picking. Mm -hmm. And then you brought in Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Like you are, again, I'm sure some of these stuff, especially the Aaron Rodgers one, was an owner being like, like, come on, like do this, get it done. I don't care how, get it done. Mm -hmm. you, you brought in a bunch of Madonnas and at no point as at the GM was like, should we maybe draft someone else? Mm -hmm. Someone who's a little more mature and yes. not just talent. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not blaming them all on that. This is the Jets. And I assume he, every GM, every guy comes into a situation like that. Be like, I can fix it. Okay, can I? I can get it better. Can I defend this? him on the offensive line for just a second? I guess. So right before Joe Douglas took the job, remember when they had that idiot GM run their draft and then they fired him afterwards, even though they knew they were going to fire him. What was his name? I forget his name right now. But um, the point is, he drafted a left tackle in Mackay Becton, who's a bust. So Joe Douglas inherited that, but it was the beginning of that. So they couldn't just give up on Mackay Becton yet. I guess. So he finally, they finally becomes time that they have to just acknowledge that Mackay Becton's a whiff. And so Jug Douglas wants to go draft a tackle. What happens? Bill trades with, uh, with the Steelers and yeah. screws that over. And then Joe, this draft, goes, okay, now I can get my left tackle. And he hit on a left tackle. The Penn State kid is great. So I, I just saying on, on the Joe on the old line like that, that yeah, the I mean, context there. It's it's fine. You got the guy now, I guess. But like, well, I, 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 I'm very much of the idea of like you should really sure up the line before you get a bunch of skill players. A yeah, couple. But, but he couldn't just. But he couldn't just give up on Mackay Becton yet. Yes, you can. I, I get what you're saying, but technically, yes, you can. You could. If you really want to be that guy and be like, listen, this is not working. I can see. I can see he doesn't have an X factor. Mm -hmm. He's not going to work here, especially in this trash franchise you gotta have the balls to say something like that okay get willing to get fired for something like that because like yeah i feel like he had his moments but uh, he always and i get it you gotta bend to the will of the the owner or you're just gonna get fired mm. but you know what people will see that he stood up to that owner who's an idiot who doesn't have the slightest clue of what he's doing and he was right Hmm. Okay, you still got fired, but now you, you're going to be a hot commodity. I was going to say, where did that get Robert Sala? But <laughs> you are, no, you are going to be a hot commodity on the market. Because you're right, he did hit with some things. It, it's, I'm critical of it, but Brees Hall was a success. He's mm -hmm. a talented player. Garrett Wilson is a talented player. Sauce Gardner. Actually, that, that one's not a prima donna. I like him. I like him a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. um, he hit. He hits for the most part with his picks. Mm -hmm. So if you go to – I don't I, I wouldn't want to be in the Jets, to be honest if I was in position that much longer, especially after no. the Aaron Rodgers debacle, no. I would at that point, if I was him, I would literally be trying to get fired. And maybe he actually was. And that's mm -hmm. why he was going to the owner saying, like, you stop undermining me. Let me do it. Trust me on this. And if he doesn't like it, sure, mm -hmm. get fired. And people will look at your record. Maybe, well, he actually does pretty good on the draft. We assume that Aaron Rodgers is not all his doing. Probably mostly wasn't his doing. Mm -hmm. And he'll get a good job somewhere. That's not in a place where the owners 
a dictator mm -hmm. and uh, the club isn't a mess. Yeah. So, I mean, so you're just sort of perfectly in the middle. Would you have fired him? No. See, that's my point. It's like, unless you have a slam I wouldn't have dunk. I this point, though. No, I know. But, but unless you have a slam dunk idea of someone that you want that badly, who you think is that great, he's shown the ability to hit most of the time. So, by that logic, what makes you think he's not going to hit on the quarterback eventually? Just give him another bite uh, of the apple. I don't even want to say eventually. Just give him a second chance. That's all it is. It's, it, the quarterback thing is hard because if you're not in position to get a good quarterback, you're not going to hit on the quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Well, they'll be in position. <laughs> the Jets will be in position, but will he and his future endeavors ever be in a position and, to prove that he can draft And again, by the way, if, if he had whiffed on someone who ended up hitting, like, like, like let's say he takes Zach instead of taking Fields, and we're sitting here today and Fields is a star, or at least a, a functional starter in the league. Then I feel like that's a different conversation. I can get on Joe a little bit. But when, when they all miss in that draft, like it didn't matter who he picked, they all whiffed. Then it's kind of like, well, what the, was he supposed to do? I guess. I uh, draft somebody else. Yeah, but they all whiffed. They needed a quarterback, no, but just, all those guys you whiffed. Gotta go to a different position. You got to do your due diligence. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, yeah, Zach Wilson, I don't watch college football. I don't care about college football. Mm -hmm. And then people were like, oh, Zach Wilson is very talented. But I did hear about immaturity stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, out. when it comes down to it is that was the weird COVID year. And it seems like it sure. screwed up everybody's I could ability buy that. to analysis. I could buy that. Bama bit. had the advantage over everyone because they were in the South. So nothing changed. Right. <laughs> like they didn't, you know, they had some things they had to follow. But. Everyone always knew they were going to play football that year. They still had practices. They still, you know. Um, BYU usually plays decent teams, but because they're near the West Coast, and we all know how the West Coast treated that, not to get political, but, uh, you know, the, a bunch of teams told BYU they weren't going to play them, so then BYU had to play a terribly soft schedule because all their normal opponents had hmm. bowed out. You I wonder know how I mean? many teams were like, Trey Lance didn't play a season at all. <laughs> well, I wonder how many teams going into the COVID draft did like Zoom meetings mm. instead of actual meeting the player. Mm, in that's person. a good point. Because I want that could. That, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. There is. You get body language. You see how he's handling it in person as opposed to just sitting in front of a computer screen. Yeah. I know. I don't. I don't know how much that happened, or even if it happened at all. But sure, I, I could see COVID playing some roles in. Mm -hmm how they judged and how what much they could judge these guys mm -hmm. in terms of draft stock. Yeah. I, was I up, guess. I was looking up a, a, a stat for the next segment. Here, so he, he, he has some excuses and, you know, I mean, well, he has the ultimate excuse. He was working for the Jets. It was never going to go that well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's true. And that's why he did a great job of maximizing his contract. I mean, he knew he had them by the balls when they hired him, so he got like $20 million. Yes. So he got paid one of the higher echelons of being a GM, which is what you have to do if you're going to take a job like that mm. because you better maximize it because when you have to work for a dysfunctional place like that, there's a good chance uh, at some point it's going to go belly up. So you better make as much money as you can. But <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe Joe gets a second chance. I feel like guys— He's going to get a job. I, I, well, for one, get, this is the NFL. He'll get a job. Chairs. I don't know if he'll get a GM because I feel like half the time guys only get one chance to be a GM, but he deserves no a way. second chance at being a he'll GM. He'll get a job. He deserves a second chance at being a GM because he's done a decent job building this roster. I, I, I agree with the decent job, and he did it on the Jets. Which is which, always a problem. Yeah, <laughs> which is hard. like – again, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of like – because with being on the Jets, you need to be a little more careful about the, the character of the guys you're drafting and bringing in mm -hmm. because it – you know, just the big city and that franchise just plays with that stuff. Mm -hmm. But he'd hit on the hit on the picks for the most part. Yes. They are talented people. Yeah. But all right, with that, let's move on. Lamar Jackson, one of the more polarizing players, one of the ones that I have so much difficulty with because at times he makes me look like an idiot. And at times I'd, you know, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio in that movie pointing at the screen like, oh, oh there it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I'm right. Um, but he was atrocious against the Steelers. Um, he played pretty poorly when they faced the Chiefs earlier in the year. And Nick Wright has a tweet <clears throat> uh, showing the record that when Lamar plays the Steelers, which is basically the biggest game the Ravens play in the regular season, usually because it's their main rival, 
or when he plays in the playoffs, Lamar is 4-12 and 12 with a 75% passer rating and more turnovers than touchdowns. So he doesn't play well in big games. And I feel like you can actually see him get tight and overwhelmed. And I know he cares. Sometimes maybe I think that's part of the problem <clears throat> is he probably presses and tries too hard. And obviously the best teams, I mean, from an X's and O's standpoint, they just don't let him run around and they have the personnel to stop it, particularly Pittsburgh. Um, but I mean, I feel like you can't keep pushing this to the side. The playoff thing and the fact that like the playoff thing would be one thing. Maybe you're just like, listen, we've had takes about guys who can't perform in the playoffs and eventually they just get over the hump and do it. But when I have playoff games and in the regular season when you're playing your biggest game and most hated rival, you also play like crap, like you're the problem, then I feel like we have to acknowledge that he's probably just a not a bright lights guy. When the lights are the brightest, he's not the same person. When you're, if you rattle him a little bit, he feels the pressure. And by the way, I noticed this in college. They got smashed by the Houston Cougars. Uh, Lamar's MB, uh, MVP Heisman season in a shocking game. And I was like, it was loud. All the pressure was on Louisville. Houston was a talented team. They had to go to Houston. And the place was rocking. They had a very good, at least athletic defensive front to rail him in a, a bit. And Lamar looked on edge and nervous early in the game and played like garbage throughout the whole thing. So I feel like I can go back to college on this too. So thoughts? I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I you, We've seen this for a couple of years now. We know we can't really be a playoff guy. Now we were, you know, with, with Derrick Henry in there and mm -hmm. think it maybe take a lot of pressure off him. You have the ball. Mm -hmm. You can control the ball. You are a force of nature. You can take some pressure off me. There's still, I still hate their receiver core. Mm. I mean, I guess hate's a strong word. Zay Flowers is nice. He's talented. Rashad Bateman's all right. Mm -hmm. Andrews found it again. Yep. Um, but we, I, I still don't, like, you can't, you're not going to, one, you're not going to, you know, throw all over the place with Lamar. Mm. But I don't like any of his receivers, and we've said it for years. You need to find guys where he can easily get it to, and... Well, you Bateman's can easily, big. Bateman's a nice big target. He's got hands. I don't know what it is. They find the hands of stones guy. Yeah, sometimes. Because they got rid of Hollywood Brown. I think it. part of it, though, is Lamar doesn't actually throw the most catchable ball either. Well, there's it that. That's not some beautiful tight spiral that just sticks into your hand. Like, But why is there not always, on every single passing play, a dump-off guy? Mm. And it's not that Derrick Henry can't catch the ball, but he's not a catching back. Like, they have Hill, but, you know, they really like to run the ball and then try and stretch the field. And, you know, that's what you want to do in the NFL, keep people on their toes and whatnot. Lamar's not that. And not to mention, like, the, the whole controlling the game ball, the whole game, is a great strategy to win. And if you got, and if your quarterback is doing nothing but, you know, Tom Brady at the end, dumping it off to James White and still winning the game, who cares? He'll still throw for over 100 yards a game, technically, the, the, the stats will still look good, Lamar. Mm -hmm. But you'll, you'll be playing safe ball, and that's, that's what he needs. Yeah. Calm down. I'm getting flustered by what I'm seeing downfield. Good. Don't look downfield. Just turn around and throw it to the dump off. Mm -hmm. so you do that a couple times. Settle yourself down. The ball moves. We're a couple plays into this drive. We've gotten two first downs. I'm feeling okay. Mm. Why is this not a thing all the time? Why is there not always a man, a safety man, for this guy? A tight end. Mm -hmm. Just always sitting there. You're running back, always just sitting there, ready to catch the dump. I don't know. Stop trying to stretch the field. It's never going to happen. He I, can't do it. I, I don't know. He throws I, across the, 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 the but that's the, still not line an of scrimmage. Excuse, that's still anywhere. not an excuse for the fumbles. He seems well, to he fumble wants, a lot. He, he wants to do it himself. You know why? Because he can't stretch the field and there's no safety man, so he's just going to tuck it and run. You're going to fumble. Yeah. I, you know, but, but the tucking and running would be one thing, but I feel like so much of the time it's happening on the snaps in these big games. I think he just gets nervous, man. Fumbling, like fumbling the snap? Yeah, well, fumbling he, snaps, and he just, he just, everything just speeds up for him. You know what really helps? And that was the point of having Henry, that we could slow the game down. And I still think that could be the, the difference in the end, and they maybe win a playoff game, even when Lamar's not great, because they have Henry, and they can slow the game down and control it. It helps. But it's still a problem whenever he is in the biggest games. He does not play well. 
okay, bringing in Henry does slow the game down, but it doesn't slow Lamar down. Mm. Got to slow Lamar down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Henry helps the team, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't help Lamar in the passing game. Mm. And until you do figure that out, how to help him in the passing game, in a big game, it's going to be the same thing. Henry can only do so much as a man running the ball. Mm-hmm. He's helpful. He's great. He's the best maybe to ever do it. Mm-hmm. I know Brian. if I, Brian was here, he'd be pissed to hear that. But he's one of the best to ever do it. Mm-hmm. He can't throw the ball for you. I know he's had a pass, passing touchdown in his career, but he can't throw the ball for you. Yes. He, he, Lamar needs a safety. I know. If he, especially if he's going to be a panic guy. Mm-hmm. Like, but if he, he lost. How, they, how good is it to feel just to know, like, all right, I can't throw it down the field. Like, yeah, you don't want to admit that to the media. You can't admit that to the media. That'd be terrible. But, like, you got to say that to yourself and know that, like, the safety man. Mm-hmm. Going to the line, knowing that I have an out, mm-hmm. and then if the play doesn't go well, at least I won't take the punishment. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, oh, that's yeah, they could, soothing. They could probably do a better job of, of uh, drawing up some easy ones and some check downs, but... You know, you don't have to do it the whole. At some point, at some point, Lamar has got to take. No, that's the thing. You, you, ha- all right. The game is frustrating. Lamar is clearly in his own head. Yes, that's why. <clears throat> all right, we start a drive. We have a bunch of safety plays. Two first downs. Mm-hmm. He's in the drive. He's feeling the drive. Let's get back to him trying to stretch the field. Yeah. No, I get you. Get him comfortable in the drive, and then try to release him. Mm-hmm. Whatever he thinks. And I that do think means. Todd Munkin got a little pass happy. Again, which is so weird that Baltimore keeps doing this. Well, they looked so good but for it, a little while this year. It's still wild looked... that you lost a game where the Steelers didn't score a touchdown. Yeah. That is bad. Well, they, they I mean, it started, Damning. it started off bad this season. Were they 0-3? Oh yeah, but they were all, like, at the end of games. No, sure, it was all close. Yeah. But then the, la- the weeks leading up to the, the Browns game, mm-hmm. they looked like the best team in the league. Mm-hmm. They they can they can be that they can be this thing you get get Lamar confident they can be that team, you got to get him confident in the game though because the second his confidence starts to shake yeah yeah you can kind of see it he starts trying to do too much, um, so you got to have those plays to get him back in like come on Lamar, you're a professional you made it here, look at this look at these dumb plays you can do that, hmm. and then he's like I can do that, and then he gets back to doing I'm Lamar Jackson I've yeah. won two MVPs yeah. second one was. Stupid, but I won two MVBs. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I feel good. Wait, wait, we had too many things to talk about, so we didn't end up covering it last week. But after last week, I said I, I'm taking them out of the Super Bowl bubble, and I'm feeling really good that I did. Now, I took them out of the Super Bowl bubble because the secondary is awful, and I don't think you can have a unit that it's as bad as their secondary and make a Super Bowl. But uh, you also can't have this quarterback who's going to play like this in the biggest spots and win a Super Bowl. And I mean, listen, four and twelve. It's, that's enough data here. It's a problem. So you can't say it's random. You can't just ignore it. It's a real thing at this point. I mean, I don't. This, this, I mean, I understand there's still delusional people out there. I still think Lamar Jackson's like the guy. Mm-hmm. But like, you can't. You have to either be delusional or just never seen him play in the playoffs. Yeah. Like, and you can't lose games to your most hated rival when they don't score a single offensive touchdown, and you still yeah, lose. That's that's funny. That's. That's damning. That's pretty awful. Um, <clears throat> so from a team that's out of the Super Bowl bubble to a team whose Super Bowl window, I believe, has slammed shut completely, <coughs> and that is the San Francisco 49ers, I'm feeling real good. Feeling really good. Not, not, I don't dislike the Niners, but it was one of the bets we handed out on the pre-show um, before the season. Bet they're under. Hammer they're under. Historically, teams who lose the Super Bowl become losers in general. And that this team, you saw Greenlaw get hurt uh, in the Super Bowl. They had a lot of injuries. The defense had taken a step back last year. And I felt like this team was aging out. And that's continued into this season. Debo looks old. Like, the burst of speed seems gone. They use him on those jet sweeps and counters, and he can't really get to the outside anymore and get loose. I don't know if he's banged up. Um, Ironically, Kittle is the one who we thought was losing it last year, and he's the most healthy of... All of their main players, uh, CMC still trying to get back into the swing of things. They lost Ayuk for the year. But you know what this actually goes back to? It goes back to the Trey Lance trade. That's what this goes back to. Because you 
it wasn't a disaster because you ended up getting lucky, you hit Brock Purdy at the end of the draft. But what did happen is it shortened your runway because those were years upon years of first round picks and other picks that were gone. And when you're as good as the Niners, right, but you're paying guys, you have to have those picks. But they went through these years without them, and now Trent Williams looks a bit old, but they don't have a replacement. They've continued to lose people on the defensive line over the last two to three years. They've lost some people on defense. The minute Debo goes down, you know, they don't have a great option in the wide receiver thing. Jawan Jennings is good, though, but the the Trey Lance thing has finally come home to roost because they were aging out last year, and if they had had some those picks, they've been able to replace some of those guys or have some people waiting in the wings, then they probably could have lengthened this window. But I do feel like I think I think their Super Bowl window is closed. I think it's over. Not that they're going to be horrible. And by the way, I don't want to take a complete victory lap because I still said they were going to make the playoffs. I still had them as a wild card team. And it kind of looks like right now they're not going to even achieve that. But, yeah. Uh, thoughts? Uh, the problem is, like, everyone else still sucks. Mm. I mean, Detroit, that's the one good team mm-hmm. in that conference. Yeah. Like, the actual good team. Like, I don't actually think the Cardinals are better. Okay, well, but, but take it off the playoff thing. You don't think the Super Bowl window's closed? No, because who's, other than the, the Lions, who's actually in this conference that can, like, oh, they'll beat them, no problem. Like, Cardinals are not better than them yet. I don't care that they beat them. They're not actually better than them yet. The Seahawks aren't better than them yet. Uh, Rams, maybe. But then again, they like to shoot themselves in the foot any chance they get and, li- they and like them. to destroy big games yeah, for listen, themselves. Rams already beat them this year, and they were missing their two wide receivers. That's great. They love to shoot themselves in the foot, they and do. they love to lose big games. Hey, the Niners love to shoot themselves in the foot, too, with their special teams. They do. <laughs> Uh, Minnesota and Green Bay, sure. Uh, if Green Bay played the Niners today, on, even on a neutral field, I will take Green Bay. I mean, if they if Green Bay beat them, no, I would definitely not be shocked. But if San Fran beat them, I would also not be shocked. I would be Same with Minnesota. I would be a bit surprised, actually, at this point. I would not. Uh, NFC South is still absolutely garbage. Yes, it is. Um, Eagles? The, Falcon, the Falcons have one and done written all over them. Uh, the Eagles would beat them. Again, I wouldn't be I don't surprised love either way. But I don't love Sirianni, but like you're paying, they pay their coordinators each like five million dollars. You know they pay their coordinators the much of anyone in the NFL. I'm not surprised they're 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 silly people. No, they're I don't not care. silly. I don't care how good they are. Like no, but they they're good coordinators. The problem is just Nick Sirianni is going to be completely dependent on who his coordinators are. Maybe just pay the you know, pay a real good coach, and then you don't have to pay coordinators. I so. would agree, but they're sort of stuck in that. But anyway, ending. we'll get to that. Eventually. There is only one team in this conference that I would be like, that team should 100% beat the, the San Francisco 49ers come Maybe. playoff time. I would still favorite other teams, mm-hmm. Green Bay, probably Philly, if it's in Philly. Mm-hmm. But like, other, again, other than the Detroit Lions, yeah, I think San Fran could beat any of them. Wow. Wouldn't favor San Fran, even at home against some of these teams, I wouldn't necessarily favor San Fran. But now, other than, like, every team sucks in the NFL. Every team sucks in the NFL. Even the good teams suck. Here's the problem. I watch Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. These teams are awful. Yes, I agree. There is so much parody in the NFL because of it. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll get to that when we finally talk about Andy and the Chiefs because I had a, a sort of eureka moment. The two best teams things. this year are, like, maybe 10th best in, like, prime Brady Manning eras. Maybe. 100%. Maybe. The Bills and Lions would get steamrolled by prime Patriots, prime Colts. What about prime Steelers? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good I Lord. So. I think so, too, actually. But, Couldn't even compete. Um, the problem here for the Niners is the schedule. <laughs> the rest of the way. So the 5-5, five and five, you're in dead last in the NFC West. And they have to play at Green Bay. Then they got to do at Buffalo. Then they at least get Chicago at home. Then they have the Rams again. Then they're at Miami, home against Detroit, and finish at Arizona. That is not an easy schedule, and they have to win a lot of games to ensure that they will be in the playoffs. Again, considering the fact that they already dropped the game to the Rams, uh, I believe they've split with the Seahawks, and they already lost to the Cardinals. Yeah. So, to me, their playoff hopes are kind of done. It could be. Like, I, I but I still don't sit here and go, wow, these teams are so much better than the Niners. Yeah, but we're talking about even making the playoffs at this point. When you got to go at Green Bay, 
at Buffalo. And then you got Rams. At Miami is sneaky tough. Just because it's at least it's, in Miami. Because it's warm weather. Yeah, exactly. Because it's in Miami and at least two is back. And there is sometimes, there's a freeness when you're not playing for anything. I guess. Like Miami at that point probably isn't playing for anything. There can be a freeness. There can also be the exact opposite of yeah. Everyone's, everyone is lethargic and nobody cares. Yeah, there, there can be that. But I doubt that will happen. Uh, Tua strikes me as someone who will really try. Everyone else in the roster strikes me as someone who will give up. I don't think Tyreek would. Oh, no, Tyreek would definitely give up. No, Come on, that's the person I, that screams I'm going to give up. I don't think so because he doesn't have the numbers this year yet, so he's going to be like, he well. He doesn't care. He knows why. I guess. Tua missed a bunch of games and he's injured. I guess. He knows why. That's true. That's true. Fair point. Um, but still, then you got to finish with Detroit. But you're right. Tyreek absolutely cares about his personal stats. Yeah, and then you got Detroit, the second to last game. Like, I don't know. I think they're in major, major trouble. And I don't think they're making the playoffs. And even if they did make the playoffs, I think you got to – got to be honest here. The Super Bowl window's closed. Because they're not going to be better next year. I mean, it's – They're going to be another year older. As long as they make the playoffs this year, it does not shut this year because of the parity. Okay. And again, even if, like, the Cardinals make the playoffs and the Seahawks make the playoffs and they don't, I'm still going to be like, I don't think you're better. Yeah, but I wouldn't put the Cardinals and the Seahawks in the Super Bowl window anyway. Like when I'm thinking well, when, I'm, when I say again, that I'm talking about teams that can actually go to and win the Super Bowl. If something happens, I mean, the Niners can make the playoffs, and then they're still not in my Super Bowl thing. Technically, only the Lions really should make the Super Bowl. Yes, in the NFC, realistically. Mm-hmm. But injuries can happen. Goff could fall off a cliff for some mm-hmm. reason because he's Goff. Mm-hmm. Um, realistically, the window is only open on the NFC side. For the Lions. However, I still believe because of the parity and how everyone sucks, including those good Lions, what if the Rams, that the window is wait, open for wait, anyone wait, that wait, makes wait, it. Wait, wait. If the Rams make the playoffs, you don't think there's a chance they can get to the Super Bowl? If anyone, no, they have problems. I anyone that, that makes the playoffs could make the Super Bowl because like, everyone is bad. When you have a quarterback like Stafford who's been in this league this long, he does at least have his two main weapons, and you have Sean McVay who's been to a Super Bowl. Playoffs get situational. I think... They can make a Super Bowl. Every now, if they did, I would bet heavily against them in that game. Everyone on the NFC side could make the Super Bowl. If you make the playoffs, you can make the Super Bowl. Okay. Because we're also like, again, is head and shoulders above everyone else in the NFC, the Lions are. Mm-hmm. It's still mostly kind of just Ben Johnson. I don't want to besmirch the good name of Dan Campbell, but he's kind of just a raw, raw guy. Yeah. That's all he is. I know. He's got Aaron and, Glenn and, and Ben. And he is aggressive, and that helps. But, you know, it has shot them in the foot time and a couple times as yeah. well. Yeah, that, that's fair. And I'm not like, I'm in Ra's good. There's a lot of talent on this team. Mm-hmm. At times, if it's not coached well, it, it's been a little sus, and especially from the quarterback position. It's been great this year. It's mm-hmm. been great this year. But I, you know, still the lion, and also there's just the history of like you're you're if you are the lions, you are also battling the the ghosts history, mm. your own your own fate. Yeah, that's that's fair. Like you are destined to lose. It's written in the stars. Yeah, good point. But I I, I just it, they're done, I think, from the Super Bowl standpoint, and they're going to need some time to rebuild this roster. And like I said. This is, this is the fallout from the Trey Lance thing. It didn't burn you right away. You thought you got away with it, but you didn't. I mean, it shut the window faster. There's a way. You, I mean, you don't have to make this take a long time. Oh, I'm not saying it's going to take a freaking decade. But you could make it take a year and a half even. Debo still has value okay, so, on the trade market. Uh, Kittle I, still has value on the trade so market. So I'm going to say the last move. CMC has a lot of value on the trade market. That they regret that also has made this a tougher rebuild. I think if you could let them have a do-over, they would have <laughs> traded Brandon Ayuk in the offseason and not paid him. Maybe. At this point. Maybe. Because you could have gotten some extra picks to speed this process along next year. But he is the young one that you he could is, still build around. But you get Debo, Kittle, and CMC, but, they all have trade value. But Ayuk probably had the most trade value of all of them. Sure, because he's the youngest, the one exactly. you can build around. Exactly. Exactly. Like, yeah, Debo would be an addition to a team looking to make that run. But, but he's still got that. The problem is now is, is 
and we already thought Ayuk was overpaid a little bit, but now if Debo is going to be toast and Kittle's getting older, doesn't Brandon become worth that money even less? Because we don't think he's a guy that, if the offense, if the defense can just key on him. Knowing he's the main target, he's a main issue. A fringe one. That's what I mean. He's a fringe. But if he's going to be thrust into a role where he's one and well, no one else is close in the passing game. That's why I say a year and a half. One year of you're going to, I guess, suck. <coughs> Ayuk being the fringe one, not much else. Okay. See, I'm going two. Because I think they have to. I think they have to rebuild. I mean, two would be fine. <laughs> I think they have to rebuild the offensive weaponry, and they have to rebuild the defense because the defense is not even close to what it used to be. Fred Warner's got trade value. He does. And it's like, like they gotta, listen. They to speed this process along, they're going to have to start making some tough decisions. Yeah. But if you want to, Trent Williams. Yes, but as it stands right now, I, I think this is after this year. It's going to be about a two-year. Yeah, that's fine. Two-year rebuild. Yeah, sure. That's about what I have in my head. Okay, sounds good. But if you We're did, kind it, of in agreement. But if you did it, if you like totally blew it, you just up, don't want to slam the Super Bowl window shut this year on them for some because reason. Because if you make, if any team in the NFC makes the playoffs, the window is wide open. Well, the Falcons can't. No, if they make the playoffs, sure. Blah. I would. What? I would. The Falcons them, scream one and done to me. I mean, sure, I would put them lower on the list. But if you make the NFC playoffs, I got hammered by Denver. Oh wow, <laughs> Denver's getting better. They are. I picked Denver to win that game. I know. You, I did too. I mean, actually I guess, one of my biggest bets I guess of the week. Hammered was a bit surprising because yeah. I still am surprised at yeah, how I thought it would well be close. the offense. I I didn't necessarily think close because I thought the Falcons wouldn't do anything offensively. Okay. But I didn't think the Broncos' offense is where it is. Yes. Apparently. Yeah. We'll have to get to that eventually. But anyway, um, with that, we're going to take a quick break. We come back. Uh, you're going to talk about uh, the Bruins. A different fire. And Monty Williams. So stick yeah, with Monty us, guys. Williams. Monty, Monty <laughs> uh, Williams. Monty. Jim Jim Montgomery. What's his name? Oh, okay. Stick with us, guys. We're back for Dom's favorite subject, hockey. Dom, what happened? They fired uh, Jim Montgomery. They fired Jim Montgomery. Everyone calls him Monty. That's why for a second I just no, it's called fine. him Monty Williams. I realized I wasn't wearing headphones this entire time. Neither was I. Let's get in it. Let's get into it. The Bruins fired Jim Montgomery. It's a sad day. You know, over this time... The two and a half, or two plus, not quite half, years where he was the Bruins head coach. If I give you some of these stats, you'd be like, why is he fired? You know, he had the most wins in that time, 120. I guess that's kind of obvious when you set a record. Yeah, I was going to say they had a record <laughs> setting season. For a best regular season ever. <clears throat> Which means, shockingly, he also, in that time, as head coach, the team has first in points in the whole league. Shocker. 263. And you, you could guess, best point percentage also in that time. Yeah. 715. Why do you get fired? Uh, lack of playoff success and the fact that it is nothing is getting any better this year whatsoever. And when you are up against the cap, you are literally up against it. Pennies separate you from the cap. This is just not going to cut it. It's just not going to cut it. Now, there is a lot of Bruins fans being like, well, why don't you just fire Don Sweeney and Cam Neely? And I, I'm not, I, I hear that all the time. I, I will hear that all the anything For five years, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> anytime anything happens on this team at all, Bruins fans wants those two fired. And I get it. There are reasons. It's just, if you fired them yesterday, how would that help the product on the ice? It wouldn't. It wouldn't. Yeah, you, you know, if you want to get them fired and start that whole new process... I get it. I wouldn't be like, oh, my, what did you do? But you had to fire. If you want something to change on the ice this season, if you want to have any attempt to salvage this year, because it's not, this isn't the NFL mm -hmm. where you will make a profit no matter what, no matter how good or bad you are, there will be profits. This is the NHL where you don't have the luxury to do like, ah, just pump the year next time. No, no, no. Especially when you're one of the teams in the league that the league is looking at to make the money in the Boston Bruins. So yeah, you can't you can't just be like ah next next year, Jim, because we're 20 games into this year. That's a quarter of the season done, and it is literally zero improvement on anything. I said a couple of weeks ago, like give it a little time, a lot of turnover here, let some chemistry build. 
okay, nothing's happening. Zero is happening. It's something, something needs to change somewhere else then. You know, I, I to make the point of like, all right, Swayman's been bad. We know why. He missed camp, that stuff, drama in the offseason. The defense hasn't played well in front of him. They rely on a lot of chemistry. He's going to get shelled. That's going to look bad. It's, again, getting no better. That's on the coach. You need to find these lines that are going to work. You need to find guys that are going to play together. Back to the playoff stuff. You know, we were a great regular season team the last few years. We set a record. Best regular season ever. And then last year, I guess, took a step back, but it was still a great regular season. Just missed out on the division on the last day of the season. But then the playoffs came, and you were shown you cannot compete with these people. Truly, you cannot compete at that level. When it comes to – playoff hockey is just a different game. It's a much more physical game. It's a much more violent game. It takes a lot out of you. Did they win a playoff series last year? They won a playoff. They okay. did. Okay. Yeah, but it'd be Toronto. So both – so the last two years, they've both won one playoff series both times, right? In, in the last two years with Montgomery, they are one and two in playoff series. One – they got – Wait, they were one and done in the second – His fr- Yeah, against Florida. Remember I said the Florida's the one team I never wanted to see? And that was their first playoff series? Yeah. Oh, Where were you? This. I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't realize that was the first playoff series. I just kind of assumed they had won one before that game. No. That, oh, wow. No, that, I said. That's wild. Well, because that was the, Florida was the eighth seed. And I said, that's the one team I don't want yeah. you to see. Um, and then, you know, you beat Toronto mostly just because Toronto loses. That's what Toronto does. They don't win in the playoffs. You didn't look good beating Toronto. And then you got to Florida again, and you were just totally – you, you look pathetic. You know, you're losing games like 5-1 to one and getting outshot like 35-10. to 10. You look bad. And then we came into the season, and it was the same. The, ta- the, the jury's out. We know how to beat this Montgomery system. Everyone knows how to beat the Montgomery system. Uh, and it's not working. And it's getting no better. Something has to change. Bruins fans can stomp their feet and say, like, well, why is Don Sweeney and Cam Neely still here? I get it. They have their problems, Neely especially. I kind of defend Sweeney here and there a little bit, but I don't defend the boys' club that is the Boston Bruins that keeps Neely and Don Sweeney safe day in and day out. Mm -hmm. But something, if you want this product to get any better tomorrow, it needs to change. And it might. You know, we see this. Well, it's hard to get worse. That's true. It was. It is hard to get any worse than what they were actually showing on the ice. I mean, they lost, what, 5-1 to to the Columbus? Yes. I looked up and I was like, wow, that's wild. Yes. I know this team's not good. And they just, they, their best player just died. Yes. <laughs> Literally just died. And you got manhandled by them. And listen, Columbus is actually a little bit better than we all thought, especially after Johnny Goudreau passed away. Mm. That was an, that's an inexcusable performance. And I'm not, I, we all said he was going to get fired after that. Mm. It could still get better, though. Okay. For this year, I don't think you're winning really anything. But let, 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 we'll make the playoffs, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Because uh, Joe Sacco, you know, some people are like, oh, it's more of the boys club. You just promoted Joe Sacco. I kind of like this, though. Joe Sacco's been in this. Uh, he's been in with the franchise since 2014. Uh, that's the Claude Julian days. We then After Claude Julian, we had uh, Bruce Cassidy, and, like, Bruce Cassidy kept him around, and then Montgomery kept him around. He seems to connect with these young players a little bit, and that's good. We need that. We definitely need that. Hell, yeah, we need that. But also... Going back to the Claude Julian days, one of the things that's not working with the Montgomery system and why it so doesn't work come playoff time, he doesn't, I, I don't know what it is, he doesn't have the slightest clue of how to get his guys to play a smart physical game. Mm. It's just not his style. He's totally speed and finesse, which is fine. It, it's, it works. But when it comes to playoff time and you have no clue how to adapt to the physical game at all, that's a problem. Joe Sacco, again, is from the Claude Julian days. That's the big Brad Bruin days. Mm -hmm. They wanted to get back to that. Don Sweeney, this is the physically biggest team in the NHL. Don Mm -hmm. Sweeney made a point to make that. Big defensemen, big guys, physical guys. Montgomery can't coach that. Okay. Maybe Sacco can. Maybe this is just a terrible group of guys that they've assembled here that will never get chemistry, and it'll be bad. We'll figure that out pretty quickly. Yeah. Because Joe Sacco should be a guy that can get at least the physicality out of these guys a little... It's a mess when they're trying to do physicality under Montgomery. Mm-hmm. No one knows when to throw. It's, it was like the least last year in the playoffs. They didn't know when to throw a hit. They didn't know when to get physical. They just, oh, just throw a hit around. Just throw my body around. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. That's why you need guys. Like, you know, back in the day, 
of like Zdeno Chara, Dennis Seidenberg. They, I mean, none. Of, it helped with they had the just unreal chemistry. Always knew where the other guy was, but they always knew when to be physical, mm-hmm. and they always knew when it was my turn to be physical and when it was my partner's turn to be physical. Mm-hmm. And they had that down to a science. Joe Sacco came from that era. Hopefully this will help. I mean, it can't, again, you're right. It cannot get any worse. It's that bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, and now you have a guy that is more equipped to coach the style of play that which you are trying to put on the ice. Okay. I got you. That makes sense. And yeah. it does make sense from the standpoint of like, listen, if you want to try and save the season, what else, what the hell else could you have done? Yeah. And even if it doesn't work, it was hard to get any worse than it already was. Yeah. So it's like, what? That, that is your situation, Bruins fans. <laughs> what, what does it matter? Like, you, you, if, if you want Neely and Don Sweeney fired, well, this is your chance. Because if it gets no better, if Sacco is not a solution in any way, mm-hmm. well, I mean, they're going to be the next out the door. True. Sure. They have to be. Because well, what else can you do with that? They point? never get fired, though, so. <laughs> Don Sweeney would probably get fired, and Neely would probably have his job saved. Okay. Interesting. That's half of them, though. That's true. <laughs> that, that's a start. Yeah. <clears throat> so, the Chiefs' in win streak has finally ended. I don't know what it ended at exactly. They're 9-1. Oh, uh, you mean because yeah, it was starting it went all the way back to the playoffs, whatever games they won in the regular I think it was season. 16, 17 games. Yeah, okay. So, their 16-game win streak has finally ended. The voodoo magic has to end eventually and it finally did to a team that let's we got to be honest about the bills they haven't gotten it done in the postseason so far against kc yeah but they're not the ravens like they actually i think they've beaten kc in their regular season games three of the last four no so they beat kc actually regularly and they've just come up on the short end of the stick in the final minutes in their playoff matchup i think I don't have it in front of me. I think head to head, actually, in the Mahomes Allen era, mm-hmm. the Bills actually have the better record. I think they do, yeah. But they have not won any of the playoff matchups, yes. which is what matters. I, I know that's the thing that we all, <clears throat> at the end of the day, say matters the most. But I mean, it's zero and two, I think, or is it zero and three? It's at least zero and two. It might actually be zero and three, though. Maybe it is zero and three. I, one of them, though, were they the Bills yet, or what was it kind of like? Like, was Josh completely matured? Well, I know one of them was... it was... the same Josh Allen, or was it still a little bit more reckless Josh? <sighs> well, I mean, like, the, the clearly, first... obviously, if they met up in the playoffs, he was getting there, but, like... Well, I think there was three, because I think the first one was... It was supposed to be the Chiefs, and it was the Chiefs, but, like, the Bills were kind of, like, really re- starting to break in yes. and be the contenders. I still think... But, yeah, I still think that first one was very much favored the Chiefs, then the second one was the Gabe Davis game. Yes. Where, like, the 13 seconds and all that. And then there was, I believe, there was a third one. Well, last year's. Did they meet last year? Yeah, they met last year. Okay, then there has to be three. Yes. Um, so, but the, so Buffalo just hasn't been able to get it done in the playoffs. But, yeah, this is a real rivalry. This isn't, this isn't some ownership thing. Like, KC doesn't own them the way that they do Baltimore. And... I think Cincy now, even though we think Cincy is is the kryptonite because they beat him in a playoff game and made the Super Bowl, I believe Buffalo has probably beaten KC more times than Cincy has beaten KC. And Cincy hasn't beaten them in the playoffs yet since. Other than, well, yeah, other than that one, one, time. And one They're one and one, I believe. They faced each other twice. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Buffalo is that team. Buffalo is the Peyton Manning to Patrick Mahomes, uh, sort of. Oh, actually, I can... I can really give you some numbers to why that's 100% true. Okay, go for it. So uh, that game on Sunday was <laughs> had 31.2 million viewers, mm-hmm. which is the most viewed regular season game outside of Thanksgiving or Christmas mm-hmm. since week 9, 2007, okay. Pat's Colts, oh. 33.8 million. Oh, yeah. that is, but that 31.2 million is more than the Olympic opening ceremony got, the college football national championship got, and the Academy Awards got. And I'll say it's triple then what the NBA Finals got at their peak. That's hilarious. Yeah. Triple what the NBA Finals got? That's bad. Uh, the Academy Awards, come on. No one watches those award shows anymore, I feel like. Yeah, apparently more people watch the Academy Awards than the NBA Finals. <laughs> at least this last year. The NBA has a massive problem. <laughs> yeah. I don't know when it's going to burst, but that bubble has to burst eventually. Anyway, though, that's not the point. Um, 
<clears throat> and I listen, I don't know what I'm supposed to think about the Chiefs. It doesn't really change what I think about Casey. They had they couldn't keep getting away with this. Like they're not <laughs> that good. No. Like they can't they have trouble scoring points. They remind me of that they Steelers max team. out at about twenty one points a game. That's what they can at their highest level score. And they will get Pacheco back, so maybe that'll help things a lot. He might even be back this week. But, I mean, it's not like they haven't been able to run the ball with Kareem. So, I don't know. Is it going to change that much with Pacheco? Well, And I'm not saying he's not better than Kareem because he is. But in the grand scheme of things, well, so does it change their offense that much more? Certainly not at first. It's a major injury. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they'll ease him back into his role. And it's not like Kareem can't catch. Sure. So they, 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 I'm not trying to be insulting, but they remind me of that Steelers team that went 11 and 0. Yes. It's, they're better than that team. They're coached better than that team. Well, and yeah. I mean, they're listen, dealing with the, injuries like that Steelers team did not have to deal with. Yeah. That team was healthy. That team was just all sus from the, from I get, the get-go. I get your point because it seems their record is way better than what they were. Now, the Chiefs, that Steelers team was completely fraudulent, whereas I still think this KC team oh, could yes. still make the Super Bowl. Yes. Simply because they have a quarterback who makes plays and is great situationally, and they have the best coaching staff and the best head coach in the game. Yes. When they go, with, again, it doesn't matter how much better Buffalo can look. When they have to go against them in the playoffs, I get Andy Reid and Spags, and you have Sean McDermott who throws out the back of his own end zone three times yeah. in the final seconds of a game just to have to then punt and basically hand the Texans yeah. a field goal opportunity chance to win a game. Yeah. Like, that's hard to overcome. <laughs> the, the gap in coaching, like, that's, that's hard to overcome. Yes. Um, and when I compare to that... But this is the best version of Buffalo. They don't need Josh Allen to put on the cape all the time. Now, they, obviously, they did in the KC game because you're facing the Super Bowl defending champs. So, like, that's an appropriate time to ask Josh to put on the Superman cape. But they haven't have to ask to do it every game. They've run the ball consistently now with Cook better than they ever have in the Josh Allen era. In the beginning of the year, they felt like, "Mm, but they're not special on the outside. But they've, they added Amari Cooper. The tight end is coming along great in Kincaid. And Keon Coleman is a great red zone target, big body. So they have enough weapons now on the outside, too, with adding Amari to me. This is the best Buffalo team I have seen. This is the best version of the Bills. Now, we have some questions about the defense, but Casey struggles to score points anyway, so it's not, that's not the end of the world now. I don't even necessarily think it is the best version of the Bills we've seen these past few years. It's just the smartest and most mature, I feel. When I mean best they, version, I mean the most capable of beating KC and making a Super Bowl. I, I guess. At times, were they more special? When Stephon yeah. Diggs was here, yeah. Yeah. were they capable? Was it easier for them to blow teams out and look impressive? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I used to call them the Steelers all the time because that's what Pittsburgh would do a lot. Um, and they don't have that capability anymore. But I believe they are more stable mm. and they are more built to beat KC and be more trustworthy in the playoffs. Mm. At the end of the day, though, the problem still will come down to if it's a close situationally late, does Sean McDermott do something stupid to screw it all up? Mm. And maybe it won't matter because Josh Allen will do what he did to put the final nail in the coffin and break off a 30-yard run running through guys to put the game away, and Josh has that capability. So, and again, as long as they're not asking him to do that, week in and week out, he'll have more in the tank to pull that out when he needs to. And they don't ask him to be Superman anymore because they can actually run the football now. They're especially uh, more built for the weather that they play in now, too. Because it was weird with Stefan and stuff. It was like, you're a cold-weather Buffalo AFC team. You're going to get home field. But your offense is not actually built for the weather you're going to play in. The problem is, like, the run game was non-existent hmm. that game against KC. And can they do that again <coughs> with totally without a running game? Hmm. Because I know Cook got two touchdowns on the ground. They were both basically goal line. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I think he had like 20 total rushing yards. None of the other guys could get it going. Okay. Josh Allen is his own thing. He doesn't count as a okay. run game. But just because they weren't able to get the run going, KC probably was making a considered effort at least to take it away, though. So that at least opens things up in the passing game. Whereas before, you didn't even have to really worry about it. Yes, but if you... 
if they know they like, oh, we don't really got to worry about that. We're gonna just gonna take that away because they are they are a good. Um, but if you're actively doing team. something to take it away, you are at least changing your defense to take it away. Yes, but you're still gonna totally then rely on the passing game. And I get it's you. Still Josh Allen. I get and you. He's still a little bit of a a Give wild man. I know, as you like to put it. <laughs> yeah. For no. better and worse. Yes. And it, I mean, I I still look at this KC team as though like good, but played way their record was way better than what they were mm -hmm. seven one score games yeah to go nine and oh like at some point luck is involved oh of course you blocked a field goal to get one of those wins <laughs> yeah, like, like was it 15, 16 to 15 they won that game too or something 16, like 16 14 yeah like yeah like yeah. that's not a winning formula yeah basically when denver had lined up for that kick their win probability was like 90 six percent i didn't even watch the kick i was like oh denver won i know and then i see later that like wait casey is still undefeated how <laughs> then you look up and they block the kick they block the kick but i'm trying to make this more about buffalo to me it's this is the best version of buffalo and i get what you're saying like there were times we watched them and they seemed more special it's not the most talented version of buffalo <clears throat> it is the most but it's the best version to win a playoff game Against, against Kansas City. Against Kansas City. Yes. And to make and potentially win a Super Bowl. It is the best version. I still wonder what this team would be like in a Super Bowl. Like, could Sean McDermott I know. That's coach listen, that. When you get two weeks to prepare, right? I don't trust Sean a ton. I'll trust Dan Campbell and Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn and that staff far more. Or if it's Matt LaFleur in a Green Bay, I would trust like, LaFleur and that staff far more than I would trust Sean McDermott. Like I that's a fair point. I assume that in this run, the Bills, one of these matchups were an AFC Championship game. Yeah. Like, there's no way they haven't made an AFC Championship game in this run. Yeah. One of them, the first one, I think. Not the first one, but the, like, the most wild one. The Gabe Davis one? Yeah, that wasn't the AFC Championship. I think it was. I don't think it was, because I think that the following week was when they lost to the, the Cincy, and Cincy went to the Super Bowl, right? Oh, maybe you're right. You might be right. I'm not even 100% sure they've made an AFC Championship game. Maybe they haven't. That's crazy. That would be crazy. <clears throat> no, come on. One of them has to I be. feel like one was, but I can't definitively say it. Last year's wasn't? I have no idea what happened last year. I think last year. Last year was last so year's, forgettable. I think last year's was. Last year's just year was so forgettable. I think last year's was. They beat Miami. The Chiefs did. Yeah. They didn't then play Baltimore and then play Buffalo? Maybe they didn't. Because remember, Buffalo had to come storming back to win the division. So maybe oh, yeah. it wasn't. Maybe maybe the Ravens was the AFC Championship game. Might have been. Oh, I think it was. I think the Ravens were. Wow. Have they not met in an AFC Championship game? Maybe the very first one was. I don't know. That's crazy. I have we no think idea. they're the, the two know. best teams in the AFC, the two best quarterbacks, and yet did, every time they play each other, it's not the AFC Championship game. Who did the Bills even play last year? Did they lose to the Ravens then? Did Buffalo? No, I, think I have were. no idea who I, played. They who. lost to the Chiefs. I cannot, for the life, you tell you who played who. Really? I mean, I could. I remember more of the NFC side. Wow. I mean, I remember the Ravens Chiefs one for sure. I do remember it, and I know I I remember Patrick Mahomes' helmet shattering because it was so cold <laughs> playing Miami. Yeah, I, me I remember Green Bay taking it to. Kind of Cowboys. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I remember all the lines. So, yeah, games. the Ravens and she, uh, the, Ra the Chiefs Ravens was the conference championship. Um, but before that, they had beaten the Bills in the divisional round 27 24. The Ravens did. Yeah. No, 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 no. The Chiefs did. Really? Yeah, the Ravens beat the Texans. Oh, I do remember that. Completely not like, yeah. non factor game. Yeah. Like yeah, Houston yeah, yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. ready for that. But I also remember, I remember, like, the Ravens didn't look that great that game either. They were just clearly way better coached and way more talented. Yeah, their defense kind of just overwhelmed Houston, I think. But it wasn't, I don't think the offense or Lamar looked amazing. But at some point also, I mean, it's the playoffs. You don't, like, if, if you're confident that your defense, like, they're not going to score on us today, especially remember how good the, the Ravens' defense was last year, mm -hmm. they probably put the offense in park pretty Probably rookie head coach, rookie quarterback. They're not going to score on. Yeah, make today. sure no one gets injured. Lamar, you fumble too much in the playoffs, so like, <laughs> we're not doing this. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. they probably put the offense in park a bit. Um, but I think this is the best version of Buffalo. 
this is the most solid, stable version of Buffalo. And I think this is the version of Buffalo that's capable of beating the Chiefs in the playoffs. Let's and I might pick them to beat the Chiefs in the playoffs because KC can't keep playing with fire this much. It's crazy. Well, this is And the maybe most... they can because their head coach, we've talked about the watering down of the league where we're just firing everybody every three to four years. So the institutional knowledge that Andy has over everybody is a massive advantage. Like, there, there's, Andy's a master, and there's no other masters he's going against right now. Whereas when Bill was there, he had Cower who was a master. Andy was a master. Peyton Manning was a master. You know? Mm-hmm. Ray Lewis was a master. And the Ravens. Like, you don't consider the Harbaugh's um, I, masters <clears throat> of their craft? I would consider both Harbaugh's a master of their craft. And they will get, we'll get to this, because I'll talk about this probably in a week or two, how Casey's free ride is going to be over soon. But Jim doesn't have the, the Jimmys and the Joes yet, you know? <laughs> like, they're not special enough on offense. You saw him take it to KC for a while, but at the end of the day, what happened at the end of the game? Like, they just, they can now last Casey because they don't have the dudes yet. Not enough of them, at least. But at the same time, I think this is the most vulnerable KC team not that they ever since played. Alex <clears throat> Smith was quarterback. No, I agree. Not that they played each other, but, you know, you had Drew Brees and Sean Payton in that time period as well. They were masters of their craft. You know what I mean? Sure. There was just, there's no more masters. There's no masters out there. Tomlin? There's Andy, Tomlin, Jim, and Jim. And Tomlin doesn't have his trigger man. Tomlin was a master, and he had big band, so he had his trigger man. But now he doesn't. He has Russell Wilson. <laughs> Pete Carroll. I know he's not, obviously, in, but would you have considered him a... Yeah. Yeah, I would. Okay. The institutional knowledge. Yeah, I would. And he had a better trigger man than with Russell. <laughs> but Tomlin doesn't have that trigger man. Now, he has one to be good enough, but not good in one that he's not... They're not going to beat Andy Reid and Mahomes. I, I would not expect that. <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, it would... Sh- it, uh, I want to say shock, but, like, that defense... I know. And that this and very Mike, not... And listen, Mike Tomlin, Chiefs like playing ugly, low-scoring games. Mike Tomlin loves playing ugly, low-scoring games. So maybe, but I, I would be very surprised. Uh, I'm very surprised. I, I would not be. Surprised, yes. Okay. Very. I would still obviously bet on Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes. I could yeah. not. But like, if it happened, I'd be like, that defense, man. Yeah, no, I get you. All right. TJ Watts. Speaking of quickly, we already mentioned it, but the Chargers. So that was a hell of a game for them. They almost blew it in the end, but yeah. this is the difference. Because that's a game for our entire lives. The Chargers always lose. They mm-hmm. always lose that game. Mm-hmm. But you bring in Jim, you change the culture, you change the identity of the team, and you find a way to win that game in the end. When it came down to it, the defense, which was getting wrecked in the second half, eventually when push came to shove, made some plays and was able to get the other team off the field and they win the game in the end. Yeah, you're like filing your nails. Are you going to be like, well, really it's just the Bengals bungling. They missed two game-winning kicks. I know. And I also feel like you're not wrong Mm -hmm. because, yes, historically, you could have, the second it started to go wrong, you could have just marked in your book that like, oh, Chargers, (laughs) Chargering. And, yes, the Harbaugh was probably the difference. But at the same time, I still think this team has a far way to go because our truly good team oh, wouldn't oh. have allowed that to happen. Oh, in the first oh, place. oh, I'm not saying that they're there yet. I already just said okay. that with KC. Okay. Like, like, KC's free ride's almost over, but the Chargers aren't there yet. Okay. And I agree, the Chargers are not there yet. Okay. They're not All special right. anywhere on the outside at wide receiver, okay. right? You can key on the run game a lot. Lad's so special. Um, Lad. <laughs> Lad's getting there. If they can add another weapon to go with Lad. Um, the offensive line probably could use some more help on the interior. Now, he set at both tackles, but the interior can leave a lot to be desired. And the defense, they do a good job of getting some pressure, but they need some help in the linebacking core. Well, they were missing some guys that game also. They were. But the, but that's part of why I say they're not there yet. They don't have a lot of depth. Like, okay. when someone goes down, they're in a lot of trouble. They don't and have a next man up. They don't. Yeah. And the biggest thing is they just they're, they have no one on the outside that scares you. No one special. Now, McConkey is getting there. So, I mean, <clears throat> Johnson has actually took a big step. He has. He has taken a I big step. That I did not step. see coming. But he's getting the best out of them. But oh, they're sure. not that great. Sure, sure, yet. sure, sure. And you're right. I think a better team, we probably wouldn't have been in that situation. But, I mean, it is Joe Burrow, T. Higgins, and Jamar Chase. And they, they were 
that was their last gasp. I get it. All right. Like if they, we, we do like say that was their be... that was their last game. They had to win that game, and now their season's basically over. Since the season is done, but if they had won that game, they might have. It was, still would have been tough, yeah. but they would have had a chance to. Yeah. So like you were trying to hold on for dear life against okay a quarterback I mean, that's made a Super Bowl. What the first or second best wide receiver in the game? Well, now that you in absolute desperation. Time. Now that you flesh this out a little more, we do seem to be actually pretty much in agreement of okay. like. Okay. Things have changed in, mm. um, I was about to call them San Diego. Yes. In the Chargers organization. Yeah. But there's still, yeah, there's, there's still some shades of no, the no, old. They're a year away. They are still a year away. Now, they will make the playoffs, and I think they actually might win 10 games. And they, I would pick them to upset someone in the playoffs. But I think that's where it ends. I, I think they win, I think they win mm -hmm. one game in the playoffs, mm -hmm. and they lose in a divisional round. I think they would lose to the Steelers even. Russ, Russ has just been there, done that. Mike has too. More of their players have their defense. Their de like, Minka, Minka's been there. Watt's been there. You know what I mean? I mean, as much as I hate to say it, and I, 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 nothing about the, I guess the offense would be like, oh, yeah, that's a real contender. But, like, the Steelers' defense is just so good. I know. That they could, in theory, I kind of actually think, beat anybody. I agree. But to do it like, you know, to do it three times, even what, four times? Yeah. To go through a playoffs to be like, that's oh. the problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's yeah, yeah, the yeah. problem. But it, if they were matching up with the Chargers, I'm trusting the Steelers more. Like, Ladd is getting better, but he's never been there before. Like, that's a lot. Mm. You're facing the Pittsburgh Steelers. Third down, gotta have it. Like, is, do I trust McConkey? Not a ton. Definitely don't trust Quinton Johnson. <coughs> You know what I mean? I don't trust the interior of their offensive line. Mm. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm saying they're a year away. Though I think they get into the playoffs as a sixth or seventh seed and they can upset somebody. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's where they're at. But, listen, this is, why, this is why finally – and here's the funny thing, too, right? You have the Chargers and you have the Bengals. And they're similar teams. They're similar operations. Both have very talented quarterbacks – usually have a decent history of actually getting the quarterback position right, actually even historically too. But they're both cheap franchises. And you're seeing it now with Joe. They've let everybody go on the defense and it's garbage. And Burrow's getting lit up every game because they can't consistently run the ball because the O-line's not that great at run blocking. And it's not that great at pass blocking either. So Joe's getting lit up and they still haven't asked him to throw because the franchise is cheap. And they, the, the owner started moving off guys two years ago because he was like, I'm going to have to pay Joe and Jamar. So, like, I don't want to pay anybody else. And I'm not going to pay for a big-time head coach. Isn't uh Because it's Paul Brown, right? Yeah. Something Brown. Mm -hmm. Isn't he the <coughs> least rich owner uh, in the entire league? Mark Davis is, but Paul Brown's right. I okay. He's, he's one of the – Yeah. And I get it. Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. It's not a real place. <laughs> um, Mike Brown. Oh, okay, Mike Brown. Paul Brown's the, the famous running back. <laughs> and, um, there's several famous Paul Browns. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to say, like, I get it. Because, like, you are a rich man. You are you own this franchise. Like, if you want to, you know, take it to the next level, mm -hmm. you got you to gotta invest in it. I know. And the Chargers did, and that's why they won that game. A game that, historically, they never mm -hmm. win. And that's why Cincy is sitting there. With Joe Burrow having an MVP type season, yeah, and they're four and seven and going to miss the playoffs, yeah. leading the league and passing yards. Because one yards. owner finally decided to pony up and pay a big boy coach big boy money and get over being cheap, and the other doesn't. Well, yeah, actually, I don't. I don't like Zach Taylor anymore either. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not blaming it all on Zach, but I mean, I I'm not doing that. But like, but even like, but, but go ahead and fire Zach. Do you trust that he's that the owner is going to be like? Not cheap about it. Call Bill. <laughs> I don't think he would. Because Bill, no, would, Bill would, would want too much money. I, he definitely would not. Because Bill would want too much money. And too much power. And too much power. Though I don't think their owner comes across as a power-hungry guy. He just comes across as cheap. But a guy that wants all the power is going to spend all the money. That's true. But anyway, so... Yeah. The Chargers have arrived. Denver looks like they might be arriving. There is hope for the KC haters. <laughs> Their division is not going to be a layup now. Mm. Like, it's, the free rides are starting to become over. So, though I think Bo Nix might have a ceiling, but you know what? When Sean Payton's your coach, it's fine. All right. 
second to last segment here before the Darwin. The Dallas Cowboys are putrid. Like, yeah. yeah. They are so bad. Are they the worst team in football now? Oh, that's I, – that's, I don't know. Carolina's found their groove a bit. The Titans still play defense at least. Now, <laughs> Will might do something beyond stupid at some point, <laughs> so you never know. Um, he, he was safe last game. The Pats have a pulse. They play the Giants, I think, either this oh, week or actually, next week. But we didn't talk about the Patriots at all. <clears throat> I know. The Patriots yeah. are getting better every week. I know. At this point, they are getting better. I know. That's every what I mean. Week. And that includes the coaching staff. I agree. Getting better every week. I agree. So the Pats aren't hopeless anymore. The, Dallas. The Jets. They are bad. <laughs> they, they are bad. <laughs> Ahead of us in the division, technically. Uh, but I don't know. I, I think I th- they play the Giants, I think, either this week or the Thanksgiving. And that might determine who the worst <laughs> team in football is now. Jacksonville. Well, you know what? That's a good point. With Mac Jones playing quarterback, Jacksonville is probably the worst team in football. I can't believe Doug Peterson has been fired. Well, I guess at this point, he's just like, yeah, hey, just get the pick. Then we'll yeah, fire you. Well, it, the point. Uh, Thank you for your service. Not to go into a whole different segment, but Doug hasn't been fired because if you're going to fire the head coach, you want the interim to at least be someone that you think was worth at least interviewing for the job so they're getting a trial run. There's probably nobody on the staff that they feel that way about. And at this point, the season's over. So why not just let Doug get coach the, get the and not have to pay out? Yeah, get the pick. And get the pick. Get the pick. But also not have to then thank you pay the service. money to like buy him out of the rest of his contract. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I always think you got to be worried about firing the head coach because you always you risk falling into that interim trap where like, ooh, the team gets a – you know, sort of a mirage jump, and everyone likes the interim, and then you get tricked into hiring a guy that wouldn't really have had a chance to be the head coach before that. And you end up like the Raiders this year with Antonio Pierce. But, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But I don't necessarily blame it all on Pierce either. I'm not well, blaming, I mean, all, the on, I'm not blaming all on Pierce, but I, when you watch some of this in-game decision stuff and you watch them, how lack of prepared they are, it has to pop in your mind. Like, this is a guy who would not have been a head coach. The in-game stuff? I don't stuff, even think he would have been a candidate had it not been for the interim crap. The in-game stuff is, you know, kind of bad. Mm-hmm. And I guess you're like, ah, oh, rookie coach, he'll learn maybe if you give him time. But, like, it's – with the preparedness stuff, I, I, I wonder if, you know, now that the, the rose, rose tinted glass, whatever people yeah. say, is kind of worn yeah. off, that, like, some of these guys – I mean, he has, at the press conference, accused – his own players, which good reason, you can see it on film, of making financial decisions. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, passing up on tackles, not putting full effort in hopes of getting paid in the offseason, that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. So that, that's part of the reason why I'm like, Antonio Pierce is kind of between a rock and a hard place with this team. No, I understand that. It's not all his fault. But, I, I, I but the in-game stuff, okay. Yeah. yeah. I think. But, you, you know, maybe in, as he matures, as he learns... Maybe someday, but, if he, I, but I feel like you look at this, him right now, what he is today, and, oh, sure. and you think to yourself, there's no way this guy would have been no, no, no. even a head coaching sure. candidate had it not been for the interim crap that, that happened. And they hated Josh. They just hated Josh so much <laughs> that the minute he was gone, they were going to play better no matter who the head coach was. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the kind of thing you, always, you can always fall into when you fire a head coach in season. Um, but for Dallas... I mean, they are just awful. Now, the Dak injury ends up probably being the best thing for them, at least. Because, I mean, they have a legitimate shot now at maybe having the number one overall pick. <laughs> or at least be in close enough position to then trade. Considering maybe one of these teams that it's bad enough, they could have... The, like, <clears throat> What do you do with that great pick, though? That's the issue, right? You just signed him. Yes. You just signed him. I know. I probably... Colin went on his show and he was like... I would consider drafting Shador and even offering the head coaching job to Dion because obviously Mike McCarthy is going to get fired. Now, I would not do that. I also don't think Dion has said plenty of times before he's not interested in coaching in the NFL. And if it's his son, though, that I, might That'd that be might the change. only reason. But I wouldn't do it. You already made the investment to Dak. They're not good at anything, <laughs> anywhere. They have three good players on the roster, maybe four, and they're bad everywhere. So I wouldn't want the first overall pick simply from the standpoint of I'm going to get a massive haul of picks and I can actually start to rebuild this team correctly. 
So that's why they need to get that number one overall pick, in my opinion. Don't take a quarterback. You already made the financial commitment to Dak. Like, can't do that. Yeah. And you're in. if you get that number one overall pick, this is the greatest <laughs> position you ever could have been in to speed the clock up of rebuilding this roster. Because this is a terrible quarterback c- class. Horrid. The only one that I think scouts are really going to like is Shador at this point, which means you're going to get even more if you have that number one overall pick. I don't. I don't know. I, I wouldn't like him. I would not want him on my team. <clears throat> Listen, I the personality stuff I get, but there is no one in this class, I'm telling you. I, the, the rest I, of them do not look like first-round picks I'd at all read, anymore. I'd rather just punt. I mean, I probably would too, but someone's going to have to. The Giants yeah. are going to have to draft a quarterback. I right? guess. Somebody, the Jets, have, has to, the Jets right? have to draft a quarterback. Yeah. Like, you just, there are teams that are between a rock and a hard place right now, and they're going to do it. I think it's probably going to be the Giants. But if Dallas has that pick, Dallas has all the control and all of the leverage. They're going to get a massive haul, and they can actually get this rebuild jump started a lot faster than it ever could have been before because this this is a lot this is a major major project i would consider trading micah parsons even too oh dude they have to they have to rebuild the o-line they don't have wide receivers they don't have a single running back (laughs) they have no one on defense that's special the only guys the three best guys on the team are micah who i would trade just because you're gonna have to pay him soon and trevion Diggs, and bland who have now gotten hurt two seasons in a row Aubrey's a great kicker. I said on offense and defense, but Aubrey's great. Um, well, I was going to ask, like, where do you go with that? Because if you trade the pick away, mm-hmm. I assume you're still looking, like, yeah, what the Bears did. You're still looking for at least a top 10 pick in oh, yeah. that draft back. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where do you go? If you trade, I was thinking offensive line, but if you're going to trade Parsons defensive line? With that early pick? I mean, listen, this is all just dependent on what's there. You don't know what, set, what teams are going to do. I also don't care about the running back. I don't. Well, no, you're not going to use a first-round pick. No, on. I don't care about getting one at all. I if mean, your line is good enough, anyone can anyone can do it. You can't draft one in the sixth round? I guess. That's what I mean. That's, I'm that's, not saying use a first no, or second-round pick. Like, at that point, just do the Ramondre Stevenson. No, I get that. but <clears throat> Undrafted free agent. He's fine. He's great. Uh, I if don't want to pay money, though. What, You're undrafted? already invested in CD Undrafted and free agents are not expensive. Oh, undrafted free agents. Okay, yeah. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just heard the free agent part. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. undrafted free agent. Reminder, Stevens is great. And plus, like, yeah, like I said, if your line is good enough, I could do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, mm-hmm. if the line is good enough, any SOB can get to the second level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just that simple. No, I get you. I would probably look to go offensive line in the first round first. But again, it depends on who takes what, where, where sure, you get sure, that sure. pick. Yeah. But I would certainly, I would not, like, I think they're going to get, they're going to swap first round picks for this draft with whoever wants to trade up for Jor, uh, Shador. I think they're going to get probably yeah. another second round pick or whatever other picks they want and an additional first round pick. Do you think Jerry Jones would be willing to make that swap in division if it's the Giants? Because the that's Giants, the problem. Giants is definitely the one that everyone thinks wants the quarterback more than anyone else. That's probably going to be the major issue. I would. Because who cares? He's a crappy quarterback anyway. As long as long as the Giants is the best offer on the table, I would do it. Because do I still trust the ownership? And I view my team as if I'm two years away now anyway. So what does it matter? Well, but I understand. You I still un- have to deal I with under- that QB. But Two I, times a year. You do. For years. But, you know. I don't trust says, the Giants. Though. Who says is the Giants going to make it successful? You if know? they keep Dable, maybe. Maybe. And I think they will. They've said they're going to. Basically, for now, they have. So, but I just, I'm two years away. Anyway, as long as the Giants is the best offer on the table, and I would probably say, I, I'd throw a caveat in there. It has to be significantly the best offer on the table. It can't be close. Mm. Like, it has to be very easily the best offer on the table. I would take it. Because I'm two years away now anyway. Because they are, they are awful at everything. <laughs> and they're expensive yeah. everywhere. So, the, like, you know, like, financially, they're just kind of tied down now, too. So there's not even a ton you can do in free agency. Yeah. So your only hope is the draft. So, and that's that's a two two to three year process. So, <coughs> all right. 
<clears throat> with that, you don't have any more thoughts on that, do you? Nah, not really. Uh, it's okay. just it's been so fun to watch Dallas this year. Oh, I know it has been. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it, guys. Listen, Actually, wait, guys, listen to the show. Like Did you the, hear? the biggest, the biggest. Wait, 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 wait. I, I want to gloat for a second because the biggest bets that we gave out for the most part, right? My favorite ones: Niners under, Miami under, Dallas under, KC over. They basically already all hit. Mm-hmm. Like the cow, like the Niners aren't winning eleven games. Miami's probably not winning even nine. KC, it would be hard. It would be wild for KC to not win over eleven at this point. And Dallas is the worst team in the NFL. Yeah. So, well, uh, you heard that they op- tried to open the roof for the first time in two years. Oh, did they? The other day. And a whole bunch of just giant pieces of metal started falling out of the ceiling. That's hilarious. Like Jerry's world is falling apart. That's very, it's all falling. That's apart. very symbolic. All right, are you going to announce the Darwin? You should. I thought you would. <sighs> it was your idea. It is fine. Yeah. All right, drum roll, please. This week's Darwin Award winner is all the viewers of the Mike Tyson Jake Paul fight. Well, probably just you guys got conned. The pay per view people. Yes. The people that watch bootleg. Mm-hmm. Like. Was like, it? it no, was, I think it was it was free though, because it wasn't oh, Netflix. Was it? Yeah, it was. It oh, was. Fr- it was at least free. If you have time. Netflix. If you have Netflix. Now, if you paid to get Netflix only to watch that fight, ah, you're yes. especially on the Darwin list. But uh, and listen, I'm not even a Jake Paul hater, the way everybody else is. Um, I don't watch his fights because I all think it's a circus act and it's stupid. But I do respect him that he does actually take it seriously. Like he does legitimately train with legit guys. He takes it seriously. Um, but come on, guys. You wasted your time. And if you just bought Netflix for that money, to watch him fight a 60-year-old man? Like, <laughs> I don't understand why people really thought, like, people really thought Mike was going to win. And maybe even thought it was going to be exciting. And it was like, yo, if Mike doesn't knock him out in the first two, two and a half rounds, he has zero chance. He's 60 years old. He can't move. I might be exaggerating. He might be 58, 59, but... I think he's 57. He also was coming off of whatever blood thing that happened. Yeah. Which I know they're like, well, he was like six to seven months ago. It's like... Mm. But he almost died. You're, yeah. Like, <laughs> you, like, he almost died. Like, your body... Six to seven months ago. Like, you ago. think... <laughs> like, like, just because you feel amazing doesn't mean your body is fully healed from a traumatic experience like that completely. That's why they easy. And it day. certainly doesn't mean that you had enough time to get in the best shape that you could be in. So, anyone who thought that was going to be anything but a mess, I don't understand why. I thought nothing, really, of the fight, to be honest. Okay. I don't really make predictions with these <clears throat> because, one, half of them seem rigged, mm-hmm. and the other half, he's fighting geriatric men. <laughs> um, the memes that have come out of this are great. I, I, yeah, I, uh, although, like, this is Jake Paul's next opponent. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the jokes usually after these are pretty funny because it's always the same thing. It's like, well, why did we do this? Mm-hmm. Why did we hype this up and wind up watching it? I mean, watching and him, then watching him knock out again. Ben, not, watching him knock out Ben Askren was pretty funny. That's the rigged one, though. I don't think it was rigged. He, I think Ben can't throw punches. No, he did not care. That know. man did not care. He was there for a check. He was smiling with his family after. Oh, I think he was definitely there for a check. I think he knew he wasn't going to win. But I don't think he took a dive. But we all knew I mean, that Ben Askren can't punch. It was well known in the UFC. Like the only thing he can pray to do is take you down to the ground. Hey, but he, he still like you. But you put some effort in the ring there, buddy. Anyway, who cares? I, I'm just I'm happy it kind of turns out this way because I'm. I mean, this happens every time. They hype up this stupid fight. It is as disappointing as ever. Mm-hmm. And then like, why do we care? Why do we? Why, what, what are we doing? Mm-hmm. And then a couple months go by. Jake Paul's fighting this guy. Oh, we're hyped now. Look at this. And then here we are sitting in the same same position. I like, want to give Jake can credit. Can boxing just die already? Combat sports in general, I think, are a sign of a dying society. And I'm going to have that conversation one day. But at least, like, UFC is, like, you know, fun to watch. It's also the best of the best. Boxing is just corrupt and uninteresting. Yes, I know. Boxing has been corrupt for years. And it's not even interesting. No. Like, at least in the UFC, like, there's kicking and elbows. I mean, I find like, boxing interesting. The problem, I, with I bo- the problem with boxing is 
we never get the matchups that we should get because it's corrupt. Maybe and I, the I guys also, are like, oh no, we don't want to. We don't want to take that fight. I don't. I don't. We're gonna go fight in the IBF instead of the whatever. Like why? Why there's like five different organizations and six different belts. And I'm not a combat sport guy in general, mm. but so like it's not as interesting to me as say some of these other guys would be. Like oh look at the technicality of how he's sizing up his opponent. Blah 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 blah. Not interesting to me. Mm. But I, it's if that. Tickles your fancy, go for it. I cannot understand boxing. I got you. Getting it. Like, it's, they're just standing there throwing some haymakers. It's fun to watch a guy get knocked out, but I can look up a compilation <coughs> of three second clips of a guy getting knocked out one after another after another. Uh, I don't want to watch 12 rounds. I get your point. Of technicality that's a and sizing up your opponent. That's a, te- that's a conversation for a completely another day. But, <coughs> and I know you do it. And I want to, um, you, yes, do, I do. you do the boxing? I do. So I'm not trying to be like, well, I mean, I these guys care. are losers in there. No, you're athletes. I, I, I don't get you. They're I'm, fit. Oh, it's fine. But it's so not interesting to watch. Conflict, conflict is fun on the show. You can, you can say whatever you want. It's not interesting <laughs> to watch is what I'm saying. No, I got you. I understand. I bet being in the ring is very exciting. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> I bet it makes you feel some things. It it's, makes you feel alive in ways, other ways you could not. Yeah, it's exhilarating. But anyway, <laughs> that's not the point. It's exhilarating. That's not the point. Um, I do want to give Jay credit, though, because he is a fantastic marketer. The way he's been able to pull this off, the, great, the greatest sports con man maybe of my uh, lifetime. Okay. There's a couple I'm trying to think. Who's a, who's a con man as good as him? Jamarcus Russell. Bobby Valentine was a pretty good con man. Okay. Uh, Herm Edwards did a con job on Arizona State a couple of years ago. That was one of the greatest of all time. Uh, he was so uninterested that uh, there were multiple. St- after he was fired, there were multiple guys who had started for Arizona State multiple years who were like, "Yeah, he still didn't know my name." <laughs> That's how much Herm was only there for the paycheck. Um, but Jake's done a great job, and I thought it was over after he lost to Tommy Fury, and he somehow found a way to still sell two more fights. Nate Diaz, and then this one. So I don't know what's next. I feel like it still has to end eventually, but I feel like this one is. I've been wrong before, so this is one of the easiest ones to sell, though. I, Iron Mike Tyson. He's sixty years old. That's Iron Mike, though. But he's sixty. Uh, Father know. Time is undefeated. How many people watch that fight just to say they've seen Mike Tyson fight in their like <clears throat> their life? I saw Mike Tyson fight. Well, yeah, because we have a generation of people who think of Mike Tyson as the hangover guy. Like, they never watched him in the ring. So yeah. I get it. I actually, I've never actually watched him fight. No, I know. Still to this day, I didn't watch that crap. No, I, I get that. All right. So congratulations to all the viewers of Jake Paul, Mike Tyson, particularly if you paid Netflix mm-hmm. uh, simply just for that. Yeah. Um, on your Darwin board. That has been it for Slow Your Roll this week. Have a great rest of your week, ladies and gentlemen.